So something that I have been working on a lot is automating the documentation process. Um, because documentation, everyone loves to have it, but nobody wants to actually make it. So let's make Roots do it for us. Um, one of the things that we frequently change for users, especially our legal clients, is permissions on mailboxes and calendars. Um, a lot of people need access to the attorney stuff to help them do scheduling and whatnot. So it's a pretty common request to ask for them to get added on. Um, however, the process to document who actually has permissions are either do it by hand or just look at what shows in Exchange online. Um, and the more stuff we can get into our documentation platform, the better, uh, makes things go a little bit faster. And it's just one nice place to put that sort of stuff. Um, so what I've made is two workflows, uh, one to document permissions on mailboxes and another one to document permissions on calendars. They're pretty much the same with slightly different endpoints. So I'll deep dive into mailbox and then we'll just kind of go over the changes in calendar. Uh, very first thing we do is we start off with a daily run. Uh, this is just a cron job to run at 7 a.m. every day. And this is enabled for all of our managed organizations here. We're going to start off with a sub workflow to get a list of all the mailboxes. This is pretty simple. It's just a list mailbox command get mailbox. Uh, we have a failure handler in the sub workflows here instead of the parent model because they are doing some looping. And we want to make sure we can account for that in the collected results. Um, so we are checking if the mailbox is. List is successful. If it is, then we just kind of end here and then we build our uh, output based on this. And what we're doing is we're setting full mailbox output to um, the data value on this one. And then we're filtering it just a little bit to only get the information we really care about here. So display name, if it's shared, and primary SMTP addresses. Everything else, it's just extra info we don't really need for this task. Um, so this is actually going to build a list here with these attributes. Um, we're looping four mailbox in the full mailbox output. And then we're checking to make sure the mailbox is not a resource account. It's not disabled. Um, and just another is mailbox enabled because there's two of those attributes and uh, they apparently need different things on the back end. Uh, once we have that filter list of mailboxes we care about, we're going to pop that back up into our master workflow here and we're going to start looping. So we see on this get permissions. Uh, in advanced, we have this setup to run with items with the output of that being mailboxes, uh, which is what we got from this prior step here. For that, we're going to pass through the mailbox SMTP address, if it's shared or not, and the display name. All we really care about is the mailbox here, but by providing these uh, two pieces of information, we can rebuild our list uh, with the same information we'll need to fill in later down the line at Hoodoo. So taking a look at this one, pretty simple as well. All we're doing is Get mailbox permission for identity being the uh, SMTP address we're passing through, which in this workflow is mailbox. We're taking that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do uh, another filtering down here. So for permission and the response we get, we are just doing user and access rights. And then we're rebuilding that list here with the uh, display name and is shared information that we uh, also passed through earlier on. And then once that is done, we have our built list and we can actually document it in Voodoo. So we're going to go ahead and loop through this again. Uh, we're going to do permission results with items. And the parameters, we're saying if it's shared or not, what the display name is, what the permissions are, and the primary SMTP address. We did run into an issue with the Hoodoo workflow in particular uh, because the API rate limiting was kicking us out when we're trying to update several thousand assets at once. Uh, Mendy advised that we can actually increase that rate limit because we're self-hosting, but uh, before I talked to him about that, I did add a quick little retry test here. Um, so on failure, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and check this uh, knob here. And if retry count, which is defined as zero up in the um, starting variables, is below five, we're going to delay it for 10 minutes, probably a lot less is what actually is needed, but um, then go back here. And then we're going to continue to do that until we hit technically six retries because we're starting to zero. Um, once we hit six retries, this condition is no longer going to be true. And then we'll go ahead and flow into the error reporter. But we don't actually need to get an error for a rate limit if we could just try it again. Um, that being said, all we're doing besides that is checking to see if there's a duplicate asset already in there. Uh, if there's not, we're creating it. If there is one, we're updating it. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and just end here. So what does this look like execution-wise? Uh, we have a lot of get permissions here to sort that out. And when it comes out, we can see we have a nice format list. Um, this is my development tenant, so all this is fake information. But we see we have display name, if it's shared or not, a permissions array with the user and access rights within that, and then primary SMTP address. 
And then at the very end, we just feed that into the add to Hudu. You can see the inputs here. And in Hudu, we can see we have now in this mailbox asset list, a list of every single user's mailbox. And then in the mailbox, here's one with some extra permissions. We have a nice formatted table here. Um, this is a rich text field. And in the workflow for document permissions, when I am adding this asset, you can see I have some HTML. One improvement I can make to this is rather than saving the HTML in the action, uh, making it a template instead. And the reason I want to do that is because then I would just have to edit the template without having to dig through the workflows and figure out uh, where this specific string of HTML is stored. Um, but all we're doing is we're setting up a table. We have the table headers, user and permission. And then for permission, we're just making another row with the first column being the username and the second one being access rights, just joined together with a comma. For calendars is pretty simple, very same output, um, except for checking for calendar access. And the only change we had to make here was some endpoint changes. So for list calendars, we are checking, uh, actually we're getting the same list of mailboxes, but for the permissions, I believe is a different endpoint. Yeah, get mailbox folder permission. And then we're specifically looking for uh, the mailbox uh, colon slash calendar. And that is the workflow.